I love my mother. Amen. My spiritual mother. If God is our father, the church is our mother. And I love my mother. Amen. And I love the family that I am blessed to be a part of. I was first introduced to North Park in 1990. Uh, that's back in the day when I was known as 9mm Mike. Some of you all know. Uh-huh. Some of y'all know that story. 9mm Mike. Because I was strapped and packing everywhere I went with a 9mm. Had it on the license plate of my car. Like issued by the state of California. The official license plate was 9mm space Mike. 9mm Mike. Amen. Living life recklessly. And uh, my wife shared some of our testimony. I won't go into all of that. My first time being introduced to North Park was in 1990, and it was to get my wife off my nerves. She kept harassing me about coming to church, and I said, all right, I'm going to go this one time, but then don't ask me no more and leave me alone. She's like, okay, okay, that's fine. I said, and they better not say nothing to me either. Right, because that was back in the day. I had a couple earrings in my ear, had a bunch of silver hanging around my neck because I couldn't afford gold. Amen. <laughs> so I had a bunch of silver hanging around my neck. I ain't had no church clothes. The closest thing to church clothes I had was some club clothes. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Somebody know what I'm talking about, right? You know what I'm talking about. So I came showing up in the church in my club clothes with my silver on and my earring. They bet not say nothing to me. <laughs> Amen. I came up in there and I sat down and. Everybody was so nice and friendly, and nobody said anything to me. Amen. We didn't have a, a confrontation that day, praise the Lord. But it was a few months later when all heck had broken loose in life, right, um, that I remembered this church, and I remembered those who came and visited with me in my home and prayed with me when, when I was so disrespectful. Uh, and I came to that church one Sunday night, uh, and, and God saved. Uh, they didn't even ask me if I wanted to be baptized. Amen. It was Minister Little. I came up to the, I don't remember what the message was or anything. I was still hung over from Saturday night. I mean, it was Sunday night. I couldn't make it to church Sunday morning because I was that hung over from Saturday night. I have told you I was a mess and, and reckless. And I came and I sat in the back of the church. That was back when it was on 41st Street. I don't remember nothing about anything, really, except at the end, the altar call was made, and they said, does anybody want to change? And they're like, <laughs> and I came up to the front, and Minister Little was there and said something. I don't know what it was. And next thing you know, he needs to be baptized. Take him to be baptized. Okay, I need to be baptized. <laughs> right, y'all know Little, right? That's Little. It just, you know. And so I was baptized, and my life was changed. I recently celebrated a milestone birthday. I recently turned 50. Amen. I know I don't look a day over 23, 24. I get it, but I really am 50. I got the driver's license to prove it. Um, I recently celebrated a milestone birthday 50, and, and it's special not just because it's 50, but back in those days when I was living recklessly, I remember my mom calling me, and she was just all distraught and distressed and about me and how I was living my life and everything. I said, Mom, look, you, you, you're worrying about all this. Just chill. I'm not going to live to see 25 anyway. That's how reckless I was living my life. Uh, and it was my mom who told me, son, I can't. When I called her up, just a boo-hoo mess and everything else, I knew I needed some help. I said, Mom, I, I don't know what to do. She said, I don't know what to tell you. She says, but I know somebody that can help. I said, cool, who is it? She said, geez. I was like, I don't want to hear that. That was Friday night. Saturday night, I got wasted. Sunday night, I got saved. And the rest, as they say, is history. Amen. And that was when I was about 22 years old. So needless to say, I lived to see 25, right? And, and I know that our God will do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. So not only did I live to see 25, I lived to see 50. Amen. And I'm excited about whatever else God has in store for me. I honor and, and, and again, just love my, my mother, love my spiritual mother. And um, it's just like any time you involve the human element, right? Any time you involve the human element, things become imperfect, right? So, so there are imperfections because we are imperfect. And, and our church, and I say our church because it's still my church, even though I pastor a church in Seattle, this is still my church, right? This is still my home, amen? And, and my church is imperfect. 
our church is imperfect. Our church has its, you know, its wrinkles. It has its flaws. It, it has its little idiosyncrasies and things of that nature. But guess why that is? Because we're a part of it. Amen? We are the human element that brings about the imperfection. So it's all good, right? You better not talk about my mama, though, because then it's on. You talk about my mama, we're going to have some problems. All right? I'm just telling you. I know I'm reformed 9 millimeter, Mike, but I'm... I'm, yeah, I, you know, I'm still working on it. You talk about my mama, you know, I might have a flashback or something like that. Amen? Because I love my mama. Praise the Lord. And, um, you know, whenever I think about the longevity of, of spiritual things, the longevity of spiritual things, right, I think about the parable of the fig tree, the barren fig tree. God does not waste resources on things that do not produce fruit. If your life, if your ministry, if this church is not producing fruit, God's instruction to the keeper of the vineyard is to cut it down. Why cumbereth the ground with it? In other words, why waste my resources on something that is not going to produce fruit? So anytime I see anything spiritual with longevity, it's only because it is producing fruit. Amen. What is the fruit of the church? It is the same fruit of a woman's womb. It is the birthing of children. Right? If, if, if a woman's womb is not able to birth a child, that, that is considered barren. Right? And, and in biblical times, to be barren was considered a curse. There, there was something, what's wrong with you that God is not allowing you to produce fruit, right? And many times those women would go into great travail and prayer and, 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 and deep, uh, not necessarily intercession, but deep connection and requests and travailing before God to have children, right? And, and when they would bring forth a child, that child was considered very special, very precious, right? You all remember the story of uh, Samuel, right? Samuel's mom was barren, right? And she prayed and interceded to God and said, I'll tell you what, if you give me a child, I'll dedicate that child to you and he'll serve you the rest of his life, right? And she bare and she conceived that child Samuel and she followed through with, with that commitment. You, you understand what I'm saying? The, the fruit of the church is the same as the fruit of a woman's womb and that is its children, right? North Park has been blessed to see 40 years because it continues to produce children. Amen. Souls have always, always been at the forefront of our church's history. It has been the bedrock of why this church was founded. Amen. It's all about evangelism and soul winning and, and helping people establish healthy, sustainable relationships with Christ. Can we say amen to that? Amen. Now listen, the method in which that may transpire has changed over the years. I remember hearing the stories about how North Park was considered so progressive, right, and so forward thinking and so cutting edge at the time because of its approach to ministry, right? Now the techniques and the approaches may have changed over the years, but what remains as a bedrock of its foundation remains the same, and that is the salvation of souls, right? When Jesus came to the barren fig tree, or in this parable, when the, the owner of the vineyard came across this barren fig tree, right? He told the, the keeper of the vineyard, cut it down, why encumber the ground with it, right? But the keeper of the vineyard, having the heart of a shepherd, said, give me a little more time. Give me another year to dung it. Give me another year to work on its roots. Give me another year to work on its foundation. Give me another year to work on what's at the core of its being. Give me another year to work on what it is drawing its nutrients from. Because the keeper of the vineyard may have surmised that the reason why this tree is not producing fruit is because of what its roots are taking in. Huh? What you absorb, what you soak in, often influences the fruit or lack thereof that you produce. 
And so the keeper of the vineyard said, give me a little bit of time to work on its root. Let me get at its foundation. Let me get at its core. Let me get at the source of its nutrients. Let me get at what's feeding it and give it another season. And if after all of that time, if after all that effort, if after all that work, it produces fruit, then we're good. But if it doesn't, then we'll go ahead and cut it down. Amen. North Park specializes at dealing with the root of your issues. Really, really, really good at the thing I love about this parable. This wasn't supposed to be the message, but it might turn out to be. Right? What, one of the things that's interesting about dealing with um, the roots of things, and, and in this parable in particular, and it's in Luke, uh, Luke the 13th chapter? Yes, Luke the 13th chapter, verses 6 through 9. All right, you go all and look that up. If you like. Amen. Um, yeah. So um, one of the interesting things about, about this parable and, and dealing with the roots and dealing with it, he said, let me dung it. Dung is manure, right? Um, it's, it's animal excrement and waste, right, that, that has been treated in such a way that, that it fertilizes the, the soils around it and it makes the soils very rich in nutrients and allows the, 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 the vegetation that the dung has been placed around to, to grow more effectively, to absorb more, more of the nutrients and minerals and things of that nature from, from the soil. But, but the, 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 the base material of it is waste. Ex Excrement, sulfur-laden, foul, aroma-smelling stuff. Y'all with me on this? Y'all been on I-15 heading up towards Riverside, Rubido, and you see them big old mounds with them cows around there, and all of a sudden you be like, oh my God, what is that? Yeah, that stuff, that, that stuff right there. Somebody, you know what I'm talking about? That's the, the keeper of the vineyard having a shepherd's heart was willing to put his hands in the mess and repurpose, oh, help me, Holy Ghost, repurpose what was messy, repurpose what was wasted repurpose what was discarded, repurpose what was foul and nasty and stinky and causing people to want to run from it and plug their nose. He, the, the, the keeper of the vineyard, oh, help me, I feel the anointing, right? The keeper, the shepherd is willing to say, you know what, give me some more time because I'm willing to deal with the mess. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And, 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 and here, here, here's the kicker. It's not your mess. It's somebody else's mess that's going to be applied to your roots. Oh, help me, Lord. The keeper of the vineyard says, I'm going to take somebody else's mess that is influencing you and I'm going to repurpose it and put it at your root and your foundation because what was waste and what was nasty and what was otherwise destructive and filled with bacteria is going to be the very thing that's going to be used to cause you to grow. It's going to be the very thing that's used to cause to feed you. It's going to be the very thing that is used to bring you nutrient. It's going to be the very thing that is going to change your barren season into a season of great productivity. It's going to take the very it's going to cause a change in the very thing that caused you shame and embarrassment and caused you to fall before your face in front of God and caused you to now be productive and fruitful and full of life and vibrant. <laughs> North Park has been blessed to see 40 years because it, spe oh help me Lord, specializes in shepherds that are willing to put their hands in the mess and get at the root of your life and cause your life to now start producing fruit. That life that was once barren, that life that 
that was once empty, that life that was once destitute, that life that was once filled with shame and embarrassment and condemnation is now producing fruit only because there was a shepherd. Because there was a shepherd who was willing to take the stench of the dung home with him. Oh, help me, Lord. Because, you know, you can't be around that stuff without the aroma. I think the molecular structure of the, 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 the dung kind of permeates the air and it just clings on to whatever it can. Because you ever been around some stinky stuff and then you come home and then, you know, Sister Garcia puts it politely, you smell tired. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I've, I've been blessed. You know, Pastor Garcia is my dude. That's, that's, that's my dude. That's my boy. You know, I, I love him something fierce. I, I consider him a mentor. I consider him one of my pastors. And let me say this. Every pastor needs a pastor. Amen. You don't grow up, right, and no longer need a covering and accountability. A pastor Garcia is someone I consider as my pastor. I submit to his leadership. He serves on our board of directors and all that kind of good stuff. We are tight. Love this guy, something fierce, right? And I've been blessed and privileged to come, and we do a pastor's conference of two. Sometimes we invite a couple of other pastors to join us, but it's never more than four. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's really just, it's really just two, honestly. I mean, just the truth be told. But every now and then, we, we feel generous and evangelistic, and we expose this. So anyway, so we do this home and home pastors conference and I'm often here in San Diego and, 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 and I get to stay in the Angela suite. Amen. Thank you, Angela. Amen. I get to stay in the Angela suite. And, and some, you know, we like to go out and, and, and Pastor Garcia is a great golfer. Me, on the other hand, I have been seen on a golf course with clubs in my hand, dressed like a golfer. But what I'm doing out there is nothing that resembles golf. Praise the Lord. And uh, we'll come back from an excursion and all that kind of good stuff. And, and Sister Garcia, bless her heart, we'll come back in and, and, and laid out in the room for me is a towel, a washcloth, a hand towel, and some soap. Amen. Because I, I, she don't want me smelling tired walking through that house. And I ain't mad at her for it. Amen. I ain't mad. Oh, yeah, I do smell tired. Praise the Lord. I was swinging a lot today. The, 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 you know, when you get around stuff that stinks, it tends to transfer. That, that aroma will, will transfer, right? And, and you'll take that stench with you. And that's, that's why a lot of folks don't like dealing with stuff that stinks. Because they, they've got these fancy places that they're going and these, you know, all these things that they're doing. And they don't want that, that smell sticking with them. And then they want to get all in your hair. And y'all know what I'm talking about, right? It just gets all in you. It gets all in your, Then it gets in your nostrils and, and all that. And it don't matter how much you blow your nose and all that. It's still up in there. You could just still, you know what I'm saying? Am I talking to somebody? Right? So not everybody can handle that it takes a certain patience it takes a certain tolerance it takes a certain long suffering it takes a certain amount of love for the one who has the mess huh in order for you to be willing to deal with that and thank God, the keeper of the vineyard, the shepherd of the house, that I'm willing to take on the stench because, you know what, I'm mature enough. I am established enough. I have enough strength. I have enough maturity to know that while this stench may be with me for a season, it's not going to be with me forever because I can go home and take a bath and take a shower and cleanse myself of the stench. And while the stench may have gotten in my nostrils and it might linger for a while it's not 
going to be there forever because I'm not living in stench. I am ministering in stone. And I can tell the difference between the two. Oh, help me, Lord. Huh? I can tell the difference between the two because you might smell like a mess. You might look like a mess. You are actually a mess. Amen. If it look like a duck, quack like a duck, walk like a duck. It's a duck. Amen. Right? You're a mess. But thank God for a keeper of the vineyard, a shepherd, a pastor who loves and cares and matures and established enough to deal with your mess. And it doesn't matter that they take some of that home with them because they know that they can cleanse themselves, refresh themselves, and they'll be just like new. It's not permanent. It's just superficial. Amen. It reminds me of Jesus going to dine with sinners. Oh, help me, Lord. Why are you going there to, to dine with that man who's a sinner? Because I know that me involving myself in his life, just like Zacchaeus, come down from the tree, make haste. I need to come and have dinner with you today. And, and Zacchaeus, as a result of just being told you're going to have a house guest, that story always cracks me up, by the way. The boldness of Jesus. Um, yo, Zacchaeus. Yo, man, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, the son of man don't have a place to lay down his head. I'm coming to your house for dinner tonight. Let's go. And Zacchaeus like, bet. <laughs> right? Jesus shows up. Zacchaeus preparing a meal for him. Um, by the way, Jesus, hey, if there's anybody that I've defra- Jesus ain't said a word to him now, Zacchaeus. You, you know you wrong. For all that that you've done, how you defrauded these folks and robbed them and overcharged them for their taxes and all this kind of good stuff. He ain't said a word. He just showed up for dinner. And as Zacchaeus immediately repented. Because this famous man, a rabbi, someone who has claimed and esteemed to be the Messiah, wants to come to my house. A man who, you care about me. That much. Everybody else has rejected me. Nobody else wants to deal with me. Everybody else has turned away from me. Look at how they're reacting to you right now, how they're turning up their nose to me and how they're talking about me. They're whispering. I know what those whispers are. But you want to come to my house? You care about me that much? Just the fact that you cared is enough for me to change. Everybody else rejected me. Shoot, the owner of the vineyard wanted to cut me down. Look, get rid of this tree. I've been coming by in three years. It's unproductive. It's unfruitful. Cut this joker down. Moses, if you remove their name from your book, Lord, then you need to remove mine as well. Because you know what the people will say, that you could not bring them out. Man, Moses, why you do that to me, dog? Why you do that to me? You know, we like this, Moses. All right, fine. I'll give him a little bit of time, but they're your people. Remember that. Huh? There's times I would say that even God himself wonders if there's any hope. The owner of the vineyard would represent God in this case. Wonders. I've been you're not for just go spend your time elsewhere. But that is the shepherd's heart. Just give me more time. Give me another season. It's not just a matter of a year, right? But that year represents another season. Give me a full, give me a full cycle with this tree. Give me a full cycle. a a, a full uh, agricultural cycle, and let's see what happens. You know why North Park is so great? It's because you have always had shepherds who have been willing to intercede with God on your behalf to give you another season and to allow that shepherd to work on your root 
to work on your foundation, to work on your core, to work on what's feeding you, to get in your business. I don't want that patch all up in my business. Cool, be cut down. Today. <laughs> Ain't no need to wait for tomorrow. Let's just chop that joker down today with your fruitless producing self. Let's get rid of you right now. Huh? See, when I had that understanding, I became like Peter. Jesus, don't just wash my feet, wash my head, wash everything. Get all in my stuff. Here go my armpit over here. Get all in my business. Here go my toe jam. I got this other issue. I got this crazy limp. Right? Oh, did I show you that birthmark I got right here? I mean, I deal with it all. <laughs> uh, uh, amen. So, North Park. You are blessed. We are blessed because of the keepers of the vineyard that God has blessed to come through this place. I, I know something about Pastor Garcia personally. Uh, I've known him since 1991. Uh, that's when I first got saved. And uh, I remember, I, I could tell you stories of, of the ministry that we've done together, all the things that I've learned from him. And I know the heart that he and his wife have ministry. Amen. I know the heart that he and his wife have for this ministry. I know the countless hours he has put into counseling and advising souls. Amen. Of all walks of life and backgrounds. Amen. And, and, and it's a testament to the spirit that is on this ministry. Not everybody, we talked about not everybody could preach here at North Park. Not everybody could pastor here at North Park. Amen. It, it takes a heart. It takes a certain heart. So North Park, as I, I, as I close out, I, I want to encourage you and, and challenge you in, in, in this. You, you have unfinished business. You're 40 years old. Correction, we are 40 years old, amen, but our womb is still fruitful. We are not like Sarah, who have gone beyond the age of reproduction. Huh? North Park has to continue to produce fruit. We have unfinished business. As much spiritual success as we have enjoyed over the last 40 years, eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has in store for this place. Huh? We, somebody say we, cannot get hung up on what has been. As long as there is what is to come still left to do. So we celebrate. Huh? We rejoice. We honor. We recognize. But we keep going. Because we have unfinished business. Right? I remember Bishop Ray Trout, one of the things that was a part of his vision was to establish a transformative type of ministry. A ministry that when you looked at it would cause you to second guess how you were doing ministry and if there wasn't a better way of doing it. He was not locked into tradition. He was not locked into how things had always been done. 
Bishop Ray Trout was a pioneer in terms of thinking about what is the objective and then what is the best route today for us to get to the objective? Because what may have worked in a previous generation, what may have worked in another city, what may have worked at another time may not be what works here. But because I have my eye on the objective and not on the path to get there, I can navigate and negotiate whatever might stand in front of me to get to the objective. North Park, we've got some unfinished business, huh? I sat for eight years, seven and a half really, under Bishop Joel Trout. Who remembers Bishop Joel Trout quantifying the vision that Bishop Ray Trout established? Uh, Y'all remember? He, he said what the Lord had given him was he wanted a tithe of the population of San Diego to be saved. 10%. Now, at that time, San Diego was about a million in population. It's about 2.3, 2.4 now. Y'all done grown. It's three if you count the county, right? That's 300,000. Let's count off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This taking too long. Amen. Y'all get the point? You get the point. North Park, we have unfinished business. There's still a high percentage of this community that has not heard the gospel. There's still a high percentage of this community that does not understand the doctrine of Jesus Christ. There, there, there are still too many souls that do not carry the name of Jesus with them through the waters of baptism. There are too many souls trying to fight and navigate life without the power of the Holy Spirit. Ghost. There are too many people in life who are not producing fruit because they don't have a shepherd in their life to dung their roots. There are too. We have some unfinished business. My, my, my challenge to us is to do just that. It's to be about our father's business right, to, to, to maintain the legacy and, and to honor the history of our mother by doing everything that we can to help mama have more babies. Amen. I, I, I want to help mama have more babies and I, and I ain't worried about the next baby pushing me out of my position amen be, because what God has for me is for me my my gifts are gonna make room for me amen because there are some things that only I can do so I ain't tripping off of me doing something else that somebody else might be able to do a little better praise the Lord that helps out mama I know I've been the cook in the kitchen for the last 10 years, but if mama produces a child who can be a master chef who might teach me how to cook some things, come on, baby, mama, spit that child out because I want to enjoy the culinary skills that they produce. Oh. So we got some unfinished business. We got some babies that help mama spit out. And when mama spit them babies out, it's time for us to start taking care of our siblings. It's time for us to start taking care of some of our baby brothers and baby sisters. Come on, let's stand. We got some unfinished business. Huh? 
We've got some unfinished business. Mama's been blessed by the Lord because Mama's producing some children. And the reason why Mama's producing some children is because we've got a shepherd, because we've got a keeper of the vineyard that don't mind dealing with our mess. Amen. So we're going to let the shepherd and vineyard, keeper of the vineyard, continue to deal with our mess. Amen. And continue to dung us so that we can continue to produce fruit. And we're going to continue to help mama spit out as many babies as she can. And when those babies come out, they not fall into the floor. I'm going to be a spiritual Johnny bitch. Come on, mama. Spit that baby boy out. Oh, there he is. I got him. Next. I got this one. Next. Who's next? Then the next one got to come and say, oh, mama's packing. <laughs> Not like this, but like this. Because here come another one. I'm lined up. Oh, that one came out quick. I got this one next. I'm right here. Come on, mama. Oh, this a big one. I need some help with this one. I can't carry this one by myself. Come here again. I, I need some help with this baby because cause this a, is this a two-person baby right here. That's all right. Come on. Huh? And I don't mind. Let me call for some help instead of allowing my ego to get in the way and cause me to drop the baby. Sometimes you just need a little help. Better for you to call for a little help than to drop the baby. Because you drop my baby, it's going to be a problem. Where mom where? Mom where, have you ever forgiven me? For, okay, just real quick, just real quick. We had our first baby, Brittany. She's 25 now. And y'all could tell I still a little... So back then, I had a whole lot of that, and I was super protective. And I remember the first time bringing Brittany to church. I wasn't letting, I said, Chantel, I am carrying the baby because you're not strong enough to tell people no, and I'll tell them no, and don't care if they feel it's hurt. You ain't touching my baby. If you want to hold my baby, you can come to my house. You can sit down on the couch. And then I will hand you the baby while you are sitting on the couch because you ain't fit to drop my baby. Amen. That ain't going to happen around here. Right? And so we was at church and Mom Ware came and bless her heart. She said, let me hold the baby. I said, mm-mm. I said, Mother, if you want to hold the baby, you're welcome to come to my house and, and sit down on the couch and I'll let you hold the baby. And she said, boy! You know, mom, we're heavy handed. She hits you. <laughs> Have you ever forgiven me for that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is good. She don't even remember. <laughs> Listen, don't drop no babies. Don't leave no babies abandoned. Help mama produce babies. Amen. Amen. So that this generation that is coming up today can celebrate in 10 years, can celebrate in 20 years, can celebrate in 30 years. Because I don't care how long you've been around, you stop producing fruit, you're done. Amen. Do we have some folks that are willing to help mama produce some babies? Do we have some folks that are willing to help mama produce some babies? We have some folks that are willing to help raise some of these babies that mama's producing Help to love on them, help to mentor them, help bring them into your home. Stop being so standoffish and distant. Amen. Bring them into your home. Do life together with them. Share hobbies with one another. Just enjoy spending time. I remember we used to make up an excuse to go to Mom Smedley's house. We said we didn't need to make up an excuse, but we would. Uh, Mom Smedley, need your yard done? You ain't got but like three feet, but I'll cut it. I could cut it with scissors, but I'm going to cut it. Because I saw an extra blade of grass going. And then after you cut them three feet of grass, you just come on inside and have a sit down. And next thing you know, nuggets of wisdom just come falling out. And next thing you know, you're getting confronted and challenged on things. And you're studying. And next thing you know, you're praying and all that. And, and you just do life 
with one another. I remember going to Bishop Trout's house and he just did life. He's like, oh, you a basketball player? I said, oh, yeah, I like to play basketball. And so we were out in his uh, backyard playing some basketball. And that was back in the day when I had a little skill. Amen. That was okay. So anyway, so I put one of the little moves on a little head and shoulder crossover. Right. And I went to the basket. He wasn't playing that. He hit me with a forearm so hard. Boom! And I was like about to go midway in the air today. That would have been uh, uh, what they call that a, a flagrant two. He would have been hit with a flagrant two and thrown out because I went flying into the garage. Boom. I was like, oh, you want to play for real? He's like, man, don't bring that weak stuff up in here. Do life with each other. Hang out. Explore hobbies. Just, just build relationships. That's like, because we're, we're, all, we're all part of the same family. Amen. All right, we're going to close out. Pastor Garcia, I don't know how you want to do this. I just want to quickly just pray in collaboration with you all. Right, just real quick, if you, if you want to help mama produce some babies, if you want to help raise some spiritual babies, you are, or you're willing to commit to help do life, just come real quick and just, just let's just partner in prayer, okay? Let's just partner in prayer in the name of Jesus. Come on, just real quick. And, and we're going to do this Mike Miller style. It's not going to be super deep and super long. We're just going to like high five. We're doing life together, all right? That's what we're going to do. Where you at? Just come on. You ain't got to wait. No formal stuff here. I ain't that formal. Y'all can tell I ain't that formal. Just give me something. We're doing life. Come on. We're going we're gonna to help. The, we're gonna, come on. Here we go. There you go. We're partnering together. There.